Hey, welcome to Lessons from the Boot. I'm your host, Ms. Brittley, and every week I dive deep into the personal growth and development that living here in South Italy teaches me in the hope that you can gain some inspiration from it wherever you may be in the world. What happens if you don't have boundaries? This is what I want to talk about today because I'm currently navigating this particular issue of boundaries in my life here in Italy, both professionally and personally. And it's something that through my observations, I feel don't really exist here in Italy. People don't have very good boundaries here. People accept things that they shouldn't. People put up with things that they shouldn't have to put up with. And it's a very interesting concept to talk about on my podcast because people don't maybe realize just how important having boundaries in your life actually is. Now, in terms of what boundaries are, they are your personal limitations that you put in place to protect your physical and mental stroke emotional health. And they also allow you to create a healthier equilibrium so that your life doesn't lean too much into one particular aspect. Now, boundaries are not easy. Boundaries mean that you have to say no. Boundaries mean that you have to be a bit stronger in your approach in a respectful way, of course. I'm not saying that boundaries give you the permission to be rude, but you do have to be a little bit firmer in your response to people. And it doesn't come easily, especially if you're a people pleaser, especially if you want to always do good by other people. Having boundaries is one of the most difficult things that you can start to adopt, but it's essential because the blunt truth of it is that people pleasers are like doormats. When you're a people pleaser and you say yes to everything, people don't respect you. They treat you like a doormat. Oh, he'll do it. She'll do it. No problem. They don't, they don't even ask anymore if you want to do something. It's almost a given that you'll do it. And that's the danger of not having good boundaries in your life. And it's something that I've not always been good at. I've definitely lived parts of my life without any boundaries in place at all, which is why I can sit here and say this to you because these are my own personal experiences of life without boundaries. And I've come to learn that they are so important to adopt in your life. And if you don't currently have very good boundaries, then it's definitely something that I would recommend that you assess and start to see the areas of your life where you could make some changes and protect yourself better in certain ways. Now, when it comes to how boundaries look, it's a very personal thing. Boundaries definitely involve the use of no. (laughs) Absolutely. No is a complete sentence, by the way. It doesn't require a 300 word explanation. That is when you're a people pleaser because you don't want the other person to feel bad about you. But the reality is, and this is the truth, you cannot control what other people think about you. Even if you say no to something and you explain it in as sweet a way as possible, that other person can still think very negatively about you. You can't control that. So no explanation is needed when you say no. And I think with boundaries in terms of your personal life, they can represent themselves in different ways. So for example, you might have boundaries regarding your use of technology. Perhaps there's a certain cutoff time that you have where you don't use your gadgets and devices anymore, or you limit yourself to a certain amount of time per day that you'll spend on social media Or, you know, you have boundaries in place where you spend more time with your loved ones face to face without any interruptions in person, doing an activity, just not spending your time in front of the TV or on your phone. When it comes to following passions and hobbies that you love, this is an area where you definitely need to have better boundaries. In fact, it's something that I'm currently navigating. I absolutely love my content creation. I could sit and work on it for hours and it doesn't feel like work. And I know that that's when I'm doing something that I should be doing on a more permanent basis. But essentially, if you don't have boundaries in that respect, you can work on something for hours and not even realize like the time of day. You can spend a lot of your free time consumed by your project, meaning that you don't have time to go and do other leisure activities with other people. And so you have to have better boundaries when you're following a hobby, because when you enjoy something that much, it doesn't feel like work. And as much as that's a positive thing, you also need to make time for other 
for other things in your life. So making the most of the minutes in your day, those little small moments that we often don't pay much attention to can be quite significant if you add them all up. It's all about compound interest. So making the most of the minutes in the day, carving out time every day to work on your hobby, trying to incorporate that into your daily routine so that it doesn't have to take up a large chunk of time in in the week. These are all things that are indicative of having boundaries. And when it comes to work, work is probably the one aspect where people's boundaries suffer the most, where people really don't know how to adopt boundaries and where I've seen people have no boundaries here in Italy. And a lot of that, I think, is mindset. There is definitely a cultural mindset here in Italy where work is really important. You have to put up with what you have. Um, You have to accept what you have and be grateful for it. Um, It doesn't matter if not everything is kosher or 100% correct. You have a job at the end of the day. This is the most important thing. This is almost like the mindset here. And I feel like I can confidently say that based on my experiences at just over five and a bit years here in South Italy. I'm not saying this is a representative of all of Italy, but it's representative of the parts of Italy that I've lived in. And it's interesting how people have this kind of mindset because It's really unhealthy for one, but it's also impossible to have boundaries when you think like this. So boundaries at work can essentially be that you will only work the hours that you're meant to work unless you are paid extra for those other hours or unless there is some kind of compensation given to you in a different way that you have a better balance in terms of when you finish work, you learn how to switch off from work. So you don't bring your work home in effect because that is where your life suddenly can become all consumed by work and impact other aspects such as personal relationships and your own health. So having better boundaries around learning when to switch off from work is also really important. And also having better boundaries in terms of the work that you will accept. So doing what is within your remit but not doing anything outside of that unless you are physically able to do so or unless it's in alignment with what you want to do. And some of that might sound really like, well, as an employee, you don't have the choice as to what work you can and cannot accept. But essentially, if you have a job as a particular role, you know what is expected of you within that role. And you also know when you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing uh, that exceeds your role and limitations. So I think it's very obvious to every person when they are doing something that they shouldn't be doing or when they are being asked to do something that they shouldn't have to do. So it's really interesting. Boundaries are very difficult. And one thing that I've noticed is that when you start to adopt boundaries in your life, it almost upsets other people who don't have any boundaries of their own. They almost take it as a personal attack on themselves. And this is the really interesting thing. There is a really famous saying that we have in English, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And it's exactly the same with boundaries. You can demonstrate and show other people what boundaries are by having them and adopting them in your own life, but you cannot make other people do the same. You cannot force other people to adopt boundaries in their lives. It's as simple as that. And yes, you might upset a few people, but it's not personal. It's just the fact that when people see others doing things in a different way to the way that they do them, sometimes it shines the light on themselves and it makes them feel very uncomfortable because they know that perhaps they too are not really doing things that they want to be doing or they too are accepting more than they should be accepting, but they don't have the courage or, I don't know, the the mindset to speak up and to impose those limitations. And so it makes them feel really uncomfortable. And as such, they take it as a personal attack and respond in ways that are not necessary. And this is it. This is boundaries. And so it's a really interesting concept to explore and to deep dive into. And it's something that, as I said at the beginning of this episode, I'm currently navigating both professionally when it comes to my workload, the responsibilities that I have to do and the way that I switch my mind off from work when I finish the day, but also into my personal life, like, you know, the way that I manage my content creation, the way that I use my technology at home. These are all aspects that I I want to install better boundaries um, into and also learn 
not to be distracted by other people. When you live in another country and you live in a culture where perhaps these things are not as well adopted as they are in other parts of the world, it doesn't mean that you have to be exactly the same as other people. This is the most important thing. You must be true to yourself wherever you live in the world. Always being respectful. As I said before, having boundaries does not mean that you become rude. You must always be respectful. But essentially, other people's reactions, even if they are rude and exaggerated, it's not because that you are out of order. It is because you have learned, sometimes the hard way, what can happen if you don't have boundaries in your life. And unfortunately, a life without boundaries leads to burnout, leads to stress-related issues, leads to something going wrong, whether that be the end of a relationship, giving up on a project or hobby because you've just fallen out of love with it because you've you've just spent too much time on it without proper boundaries in place. And, you know, these things are never good. So the next time you find yourself questioning whether you should be doing something or not, I feel like what you should be asking yourself is, do I have boundaries around this? Is this something that makes me feel good? It's a bit like um, Marie Kondo and her like life-changing magic of tidying up when she speaks about how, you know, does this object spark joy in my life? It's a similar concept, actually, in relation to boundaries. Does this task bring me joy? Does it, it, does it feel good within myself? Is it something that I want to be doing? If it is, then accept it. If not, then you put your boundary up and you say no. And this is exactly the same principle I think we should all adopt in our lives because I've been at the other end of the spectrum where I've not had boundaries and I've been very close to burnout. And that's why I sit here now and I start to instill my boundaries. And yes, to some people, maybe I'm rigid or I'm not adaptable or, you know, I'm just strange because I say no to things that everybody else here laps up like a dog. But essentially, I say no because I know what the repercussions of saying yes will have. And trust me, sometimes saying yes is worse than saying no in the long run, even if you can't notice it at the time. I'll see you in the next episode.